What's up everybody? Russ with RWG Research here. Um, I believe this is update number three. Uh, today is the second of... What's after August? September. <laughs> September 2nd. Alright, um, I'm going to do a couple of uh, things with the syringe test. Um, I've got these in. These look mighty dangerous. 60 uh, cc. Those are 60 milliliters. I don't know the difference, but anyway. Uh, I'll have to calculate that out later. 60 milliliters worth. Same ones Bob has. Um, these are actually the exact same ones. I will give you the part numbers here in a minute. Uh, but this video really is uh, to do a couple of tests. Uh, if you watch Bob do his demonstrations, um, he fills these up with the inert gases. He puts it in the device and uh, this doesn't seem to pull in um, from the vacuum, which you would think it would. Um, I've done some thinking about it and I think uh, depending on how hard these are to pull and these are these are pretty hard to pull because of the such a small needle I believe those are uh, 22 gauge alright so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the part numbers and you can look them up on Google or where to order them alright it's a little messy out here in the outside lab uh, here is the syringes okay and yeah just look that up you'll find them basically they come in a box like this and this is what they look like good enough all right that's done needles all right here's the needles I'll give you this information and you can look up here pause the video high definition make sure you check it and they look like this. I'll show you what the tip of these look like here in a second. Alright, there's the needles and the uh, septas. Here's what they are. Here's the number. All of these three items are actually extremely expensive. Um, I don't know if it's just because they're metal grade or, or uh, I mean medical grade or, or, or what the deal is, but these little septas are like little rubber little rubber things that the needle goes through and then it closes and opens. One side's got a uh, one side's got a shiny coating on it if it'll focus and the other side's just rubber the same as what the thickness is. The coating side I believe is supposed to go on the inside from what I understand towards the uh, area I could be wrong, but I believe that's accurate. Either way, I've got it facing in right now, and it seems to be working. Um, the fittings, all right. Bob did give me the fitting numbers. Um, I'm using something slightly different. That's only because I couldn't find anything at my local hardware store at the moment. I wanted to just test this out. So here's what I have. This is a uh, flare adapter. These are five sixteenths. Uh, and then you can get whatever size thread you need here. This is just happen, happens to be quarter inch. And then the 5 16 long flare end. Well, this is called a short rod nut. Um, Bob recommended a 5 16 um, uh, compression fitting with a long nut on it. And this is just what happened, happened to be at the local store. And actually, I almost like this better than the compression fittings. The compression fittings have an opening where this has more of a closed edge on it. Um, so these, these work just fine. And uh, for right now, basically here's my setup. Sorry about the giant mess. I haven't had time to clean out here. Um, basically, I've just got my little chamber I've made up. I've got a vacuum line and a gauge connected to it. And uh, then I've got the little septa connected right here. You can see it. Similar to what Bob has on his device. And uh, then I've got this hooked up to two ordinary... Um, uh, vacuum pumps or compression pumps, whichever way you want to look at it, for refrigerators or freezer. I got them hooked up in series, so one's pulling a vacuum on the other, and I can get a higher ranged vacuum on it if I do that. So let's set you back down. Now the question, uh, the question at hand here was, when Bob pushes that in there, he's got a vacuum on there. Why doesn't the syringe get sucked in? My comment was because the hole was so small on this needle and let me give you a visual of what this needle looks like this should be alright 
it's got a bent tip on it. I'm trying to get it on my skin so you can actually see it. It's got a bent tip on it, just like that, so that whenever you stick it in there, the hole doesn't clog up. I'm sure that's not going to focus, but we'll try it. There you go, you can see the end of it. See how small that hole is? Alright, so that's what the needle looks like. That way when you push it inside here, um, it doesn't get clogged and this doesn't get a giant hole punched in it. So, you can see my vacuum. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. And here's what I found out. When you buy these syringes, they come coated with some sort of a uh, permagelly type of stuff. You can see how shiny see how shiny it is alright so it's got some slick stuff on it so when you push this in or pull it out it, it moves pretty well you can see how much how much time it takes to get it on there. if I pull it all the way out and let it go that's how much that's how much time it takes to get the vacuum inside this so I have one here that I cleaned alright and I'm gonna guess that you would want these to be clean as possible so you don't uh, tamper with the gas so basically I've cleaned this one this one still moves all right, but not very well. But it is, it does move. Okay, you can see that it does move. So here's the deal. First thing we'll do. You can see the gauge. All right. First thing that we'll do. I'm gonna close this valve off. All right. The vacuum stays pretty good. About 29 and a half inches of mercury. All right. I'm gonna pull this out. It takes a while to get it balanced through that little bit of needle. Stick this needle in there. And you can see the rate at which that pulls in. Now the first thing I want to tell you, okay, is that my chamber takes about 10 of these to fill up. If I had a smaller chamber, by the time this got all the way down, the vacuum may be up to about 20, and then, uh, you know, then to 10 and almost to zero by the time you get to the third syringe. Um, if you look at Bob's device, that's that's basically what he's he's got. He's got a much 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 smaller chamber, which means he has less vacuum. All right, I'll do that again, but this time I'm going to pull it out past the point where I'm past that little notch. Okay, now watch what happens. I'll turn this back off. I just pulled a little bit more vacuum on it for you. Now watch what happens. Can you see that in the camera? Now as soon as it gets past that little notch in the back, watch. Alright. So I'll do that again. If I pull it out past the back, like that, where the back is past it, which is possible, what Bob did, purpose or accident, stick it in here, nothing really happens you got to start pushing it in for anything to happen. Okay? So there's the answer on that. Now on the other hand, that was a non-cleaned one. That came right out of the package. If I take this clean one, alright, I'm even going to leave this, oh by the way these needles just screw on here in case you were curious. That's kind of the way needles do. That's These are nothing special. Alright, if I pull this out, not past the point of return, I'm just going to leave the vacuum pump running insert this in here okay you can see that all right it's not going anywhere uh, in 30 uh, 20 almost 29 and uh, not quite a quarter 29 almost not quite a quarter inches of mercury there check it out it's not moving oh there it just jumped it jumped to the point where it could go in now you can push it down past that, but I've got it so clean past that it almost it almost gets stuck. All right, so we'll pull this back out. Yep, there you go. The whole entire thing actually came off. See that? And that's just because I got it too clean, probably. If I can get it out of there. All right, I got it back out. It took me a second. So basically, depending on how clean they were, I'm sure Bob's used them things for a while. Let's see my vacuum here. It's, I had to pull the vacuum again. I used a compressor to get it out. Let's 
so it's not moving. It's at the point that I can move it. See, it's movable right there in that area. But it doesn't just suck in out of nowhere. I'm at 29, 29 inches of mercury. Or close to 28 and a half right this moment. It takes a little bit to get down to really down to 30 with this setup. So, does it work? Uh, yeah, but it's not, not really consistent. So anyway, there's your answer. I'm not gonna drag it out, but uh, it, it, it's not uh, it's not a 100%. Yes, it will get sucked in right away. That's not how this works. See, look, see how long it took, and then now it's stuck here. Even though I can push it in. All right. And if I wasn't pulling this out and I was pushing it out with a with another uh, pump like he did. I'm sure it would be just fine. Matter of fact, we can do that. And I don't want to do that with this cap. Okay, so you see, there's your answer. Depending on how dry the syringe is, it's not just going to pull in. And I almost guarantee that he cleaned this real well. Alright, enough of that demonstration. Uh, the only thing I'm really waiting on is the gas right now, and uh, building some of the chamber. This is why I'm not out in the outside lab. It's hot, and it's not really that hot, but the hurricane brought up a bunch of humid weather with it. So, anyway, this looks dangerous, doesn't it? All right. So, end of end of demonstration. I will uh, upload this video, and you guys can leave a comment on it. But I wanted to inform you that things aren't always as they seem. Do the experiment, try it yourself, then you can sit there and uh, tell me what is and is not true. Because until you do the experiment, you don't know. That's, that's me included. Um, I was speculating and the uh, first thing I did was hooked up this syringe that's still got a lot of lube in it and you know what happened? I was like, well, crap, maybe I was wrong. So I cleaned one. I figured you'd want to clean them so you don't contaminate the gas. And uh, although you can move this one, okay, it is much harder. And if you watch Bob in his last demonstration, he's actually holding it against his chest, lighting a match, pushing pretty darn hard, okay? All right, this is Russ, rwgresearch.com. I want to thank you guys for the support. Please keep giving support. If you guys don't give support, it's just me doing something. I don't feel like I'm getting any feedback, and I don't feel like I'm really doing anything good for you guys. Again, the purpose of doing this is to give you guys the information you need to go do this on your own when and if the time comes, or if you're doing it right now. A few people sent me some messages that they're kind of working on this stuff right now. Hey, awesome, guys. That's good. Um, so, yeah. Peace and love to you all. Have a good day. I'm going to go inside where it's not sweating and finish the day off with my family. Have a good day, guys. See ya.